such authors, such as Joseph Conrad and John Buchan. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. In fact, it really should be thank you very much for waiting for us because we are we are, you know, we're, we're a tad behind schedule, to put it uh, mildly. Uh, so sorry about that, but um, we're here now and um, roaring to go. Our guest this morning is Mr. Ni Akishiju. He's a journalist, he's a writer, and a policy analyst. Uh, a fine morning to you, Mr. Akishiju, in our Abuja studio. Very fine morning to you, Uncle Yori. It's uh, really great to be here. Indeed. So, um... Mr. Hiju, let's talk about uh, the kind of uh, brouhaha that we're hearing over the federal government's um, uh, decision to relocate some you know, key uh, agencies, uh, federal agencies, national agencies, uh, to Lagos, and in particular talking about the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria as well as the Central Bank. That has led to a lot of commentary, coming especially from the North, and indeed um, you might be aware that uh, uh, an organization, Joint Action Com uh, Committee of Northern Youth Associations, uh, actually held a press conference, and they, uh, the way they see it is that um, uh, this violates the whole principle of um, you know, uh, equal participation of all the regions, and uh, uh, there's just been a brouhaha. Uh, first of all, Mr. Kishiju, what, what is your understanding as to the reason why the federal government thinks this is uh, a necessity? I, I think uh, principally those, um, those ministries or uh, agencies involved are actually business economic oriented uh, agencies. Uh, we're talking about uh, departments in the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, units in the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, the Federal uh, Aviation Authority of Nigeria, which is principally uh, a business-driven entity, too. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it goes beyond the normal uh, civil service, public uh, department engagement. Uh, so to my mind, I think the decision uh, would have to be about corporate decision on how to optimize uh, operational efficiencies. And to that extent, there is, there is no argument, you know, when a corporate body takes a decision on how to optimize its operational efficiency, one, in terms of service delivery, uh, two, in terms of uh, uh, either enhancing revenue collection or reducing waste or even, you know, removing possibility of leakages in its uh, revenue channels. So um, when a decision like that is made, it is not based on sentiments, uh, neither, neither is it based on geopolitical uh, consideration. It has to be. Ba it is based on purely business decision. And I think uh, one item in that regard that, this, that in that regard that struck me was actually uh, when uh, I got to know that some workers, some staffers of uh, these, uh, these uh, departments and agencies were actually posted out, you know, as if they were doing a special service when, in fact, they should be, they, they, are, they are supposed to be on routine engagement, which means to say that you resume between 8 and 5 o'clock, you know, 8, 9 hours that you are supposed to be engaged in your routine uh, job. But rather than be engaged in your routine job, you are posted out for special engagement where you are paid DTAs, duty to allowance, and other forms of allowances because you were, you were operating outside your geographical space, your normal geographical space. Uh, well, that would eventually, you know, have implication for, uh, for uh, uh, what do you call it, for operational uh, cost, you know. So if it is possible to actually locate those agencies to where there are availability of spaces, one, and to where they are directly engaging their customers, their, uh, their consumers, and, uh, and their publics, as it were, it's, it saves the agency's revenue. At the end of the day, those revenues saved will also translate to higher earnings 
for the federal government. And when you have higher earnings for the federal, federal government, you also have increased earnings or increased revenue to be shared amongst the three tiers of government at the level of FAC. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Akishiju, because um, um, that, that is a sort of a, a, a rational uh, way to look at the matter. But um, what would you say against those that, um, what is the word now? Is it uh, uh, an undue suspicion of every move of government and talking about uh, uh, disenfranchising uh, a particular section of the country? Have we arrived at that time when undue sensitivity is creeping into uh, affairs? And if we're not careful, it actually could stymie uh, operations in terms of if, if um, the government's concerned, uh, if they begin to look at, oh, uh, what are these people going to say about this particular mode? I mean, we have to get on with it, do what we need to do uh, along the lines that you have spoken of. But these kind of situations where we're getting press conferences to cry out against a disenfranchisement, allegedly, uh, what do you make of it? I, I don't really see any indication of disenfranchisement. What I see and what is becoming obvious is the fact that um, the elites, Nigerian elites, where they believe their interest, you know, uh, and it's, it's, it, it cuts across all uh, ethnic uh, divides, where they believe their interest is being impugned or impinged, uh, come out vociferously uh, to not only incite public sentiments, you know, but in most cases, to get across, to put across um, agitative identity uh, conspiracy, you know, and by so doing, we lose our focus on the facts of the matter and then start pursuing issues around sentiments and base sentiments for that matter. Uh, the, the first, what, what is the essence of the federal uh, territory, federal capital territory. It's a creation of law, one. It is a product of the Nigerian federal system. And of course, everybody knows that, uh, everybody, especially those who are making those comments, know that every inch of the federal capital territory was paid for from the federal federation account. So, as it were, there is no ethnic group that is supposed to be the custodian of the federal capital territory. The federal capital territory belongs to all Nigerians. And the fact that uh, you have all federal institutions and agencies, and of course uh, the harms of government operating out of Abuja, does not limit the fact that if there is a need to have some other agencies operate outside Abuja, for effectiveness and for e e efficient service delivery, it's, it's, it does not translate to the fact that uh, the federal capital territory, for instance, is being moved from Abuja to another place, or to Lagos, uh -huh. Lagos specific, as it were. Exactly. So exactly. those who are talking about marginalization, perhaps we should ask them, on whose behalf are they talking about ma marginalization? Because everybody that knew the trajectory of the decision that led so the movement of the federal capital territory to Abuja, as it were, will know that it was done out of equity and out of a clear objective-mindedness for Nigerians to have a space where everybody can lay claim to. So it's, 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 uh, it's uh, amusing when especially you see respected individuals from certain parts of the country that claim that wants to lay claim, you know, to... Uh, to the standing or the status of Abuja, or that wants to lay claim to the custody of Abuja as it were. Indeed. Um, well, as you said, um, it is, it's not very strange, uh, um, but I wonder if the elite, I mean, I did say the, the organization that held, our, that held the press conference was the, um, they referred to themselves as the Joint Action Committee of the Northern Youth Association. I don't know if that is really the elite. Um, you know, people, they've taken advantage of the right to have their say. 
And um, this that they are projecting, that it's against the very idea uh, of, um, which you've just described, the very idea of the national uh, character of Abuja uh, and how it was brought into being, and how any of this could actually be working against that, um, as you've just explained, uh, it really beggars belief. But such is their belief, and um, they are, you know, expressing, you know, their what how how they see it. But I think it makes a lot more sense uh, what you have just explained that it's all about operational efficiency. But then everybody is entitled to their opinion. I suppose. It shouldn't sway uh, government. Government probably has, you know, a bit of work to do in terms of assuaging whatever fears they are, uh, explaining things that are not quite clear, and if need be, uh, prove these things. Because you did say that with a much more efficient, you know, uh, federal agencies, for instance, uh, then there'll be more, you know, revenue to share around. Uh, but people are seeing it as the right to regional participation. Uh, whatever that means. And I don't know how that is being compromised by a few units of the Central Bank and the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria uh, moving to Lagos, which I, where I understand most of these businesses will be sort of, um, uh, most of their business concerns and interests will be sort of concentrated in. It seems to stand to reason. Well, I, I think we can even go beyond, beyond uh, this uh, immediate consideration. And have a flip back to our history of waste. Um, when the federal government uh, apparatus of states and agencies, MDAs, uh, all MDA, MDAs collectively were moved uh, from Abuja and from Lagos to Abuja, we we have we have been. Uh, do I say Lagos State or the Nigerian people were left with a legacy of waste? Uh, in, in terms of the vast real estate that was more or less abandoned. Because so while there was a plan of engagement or movement from Lagos to Abuja, there was no backup plan on what to do with the vast real estate that would become empty on the, the movement uh, to Abuja. So of whoever, I mean, we, we know what's happening, the state of uh, deterioration of uh, the uh, federal secretariat, Ikoyi, that's, yes. that's a huge, a huge, a, a, a huge, vast real estate. And not just real estate, premium. It's, it's on premium land, you know. And up to today, it's, it's, it's there, rotting it's since there. 1991. Yeah. Nobody's doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we also look at uh, the defense house. We also look at nets. Nigerian uh, uh, yes. communication, telecommunication uh, uh, house. That was, that was uh, uh, the tallest building in the whole of West Africa at a point in time. But we moved everybody and abandoned that uh, building without knowing what to do with it. The defense house, you know, the former Ministry of Defense, it's, 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 a, it's a huge functional building by the time we moved, uh, they were moving out of it, but now it's there, abandoned. And you can start counting so many of such structures. So many of them. If, if we are going to move capital, it does not translate to abandoning where we are moving out of. We are supposed to use those structures to enhance capacities and capabilities. And of course, to even make more earnings for the federal government. Indeed. Um, let me bring on uh, Mr. George uh, Inikedia. Thank you very much for calling in. Please go ahead now. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Good morning. Good morning your guest. Uncle Yori, I think people should just stop heating up the politics unnecessarily. The capital of Nigeria was Lagos before. When it was uh, being moved to Abuja, we didn't hear uh, Yoruba leaders or cultural organizations in the southwest saying they are, they are robbing us of our economic and political power. You, you, I, it is this uh, recent election that has just made ethnicity to come to the fore in Nigeria, and it's very, very unfortunate. If somebody, uh, if somebody stumbles in Lagos or elsewhere in Nigeria and it falls down, Ohanis and people will say they constructed the road 
you know, in the way that he went and he go and passes that place, he will fall down. What is happening? We don't need all this. I worked in Central Bank before. The department that they have asked to come to Lagos, in the first place, doesn't even have any reason to be in Abuja. 95% of the banks that they are supervising, they are in Lagos. So in, when they were in Lagos, they were paying them money to go to other states to go and supervise them. If 95% of the banks that you are working and supervising are in Lagos, why do you need to be in Abuja? The other departments that they also have to be in Lagos, most of their operational you know, exigencies are in the Lagos area. And let me ask, what economic or socioeconomic power does it take away from the north if some departments in central banks are moved to Lagos or elsewhere? What, what, does it, what do they stand to do? If you have uh, uh, somebody that needs to be employed in the bank, it's not done in Lagos now. It's still done in Abuja. So I, I, I don't see the reason why all this. I think it borders on ignorance. People do not seem to know the implications of the things that they are saying. The federal capital territory does not belong to one ethnic group. If you look at the map, it is at the center of Nigeria. I think that was the reason why it was shifted to that place. It doesn't belong to one region. This is, I mean, we, we should just do away with all these ethnic things and discuss things that are, are serious. I'm just tired of hearing all this. Good morning. Hi, morning. Thank you uh, very much. Um, as uh, Mr. Atishiju has also explained, uh, that sentiment of the federal capital territory um, belongs to all uh, Nigerians, um, wherever you happen to be in the country, whatever the uh, region. So talking about a, a, a regional uh, dispossession or uh, some advantage, some disadvantage now accruing to you know, a particular reason as a result of all of these. That, that was the germane question that uh, Mr. George asked there, Mr. Akishiju. So, so what exactly is it that would have been of benefit, so to speak, uh, to the North that is now cancelled out now, apart from the efficiencies uh, that have been spoken about? So I, I think perhaps the Minister of Information and uh, all those concerned have a bit of work to do to, you know, uh, yeah, I, I guess we can't just say, uh, ig ignore these things. No, but uh, maybe there they just needs to be some education or re-education uh, to sort of uh, in inform us. And um, it is also worrisome that we're getting these kind of conversations. Instead of about one Nigeria, we're getting comments, essays, almost colloquiums on uh, regionalism. It's, it's, I don't think it's anything to be encouraged, Mr. Kishiju. It should not. It should not. I, I yes, going back to your comments on uh, the information minister, I, I think um, there, are, there are certain things or there are certain issues we, we don't need uh, to allow it to linger because when it lingers, it allows for conjectures and it also becomes contagious because uh, uh, over time you will see mm -hmm. all manners of people forming. Uh, uninformed positions on, the, on such issues. I, I, till now, I have not seen anywhere where the uh, CBN, for instance, had issues a formal, issued a formal statement explaining this position. I have read the fan position, which was very, very clear. Uh, but the CBN, it's, uh, it's not too clear. We, we can only assume because uh, the papers, the newspaper that reported it uh, actually ascribed uh, the reportage to, to sources. But I think it's also important that uh, we have a formal engagement by a high officer of the state, you know, to explain all this. But beyond okay. that, Nigeria had grown to a level where we cannot be imputing ethnicity, disadvantages, and all that to, uh, to any decisions made by government or by yeah. people in government. Uh, okay. One, one second, please. Like, I, I, beg, I, beg where, your, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon for interrupting you. Sorry about that, Mr. Kiji. You, um, uh, Olawale has come on the line. I, I didn't want to lose him. Good morning, Mr. Olawale. Yeah. yeah, good morning, Professor Yerifolani. Uh, welcome back. 
I think Nigeria should go beyond this uh, trivia uh, sentiment. Look, the, uh, the capital of Nigeria was one in Calabar, from Calabar to Kogi State, Lokoja. Okay? From that place to Lagos. And from Lagos to Abuja. The reason why it was cited in Abuja was because it was the center. That does not mean all the paraphernalia of office to go to uh, Abuja. Okay? These things have been explained on several occasions. For economic reasons, they brought a section of uh, Central Bank back to Lagos. Okay? And uh, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. When I was seeing the service going to Abuja from Lagos, to realize that the Nigeria Security and Printing, that is an arm of the central bank, wasn't working. It was printed in uh, something in Lagos. Okay? I'm but there was so much pressure to take it back to Abuja, it was not economical to do. But I think Nigeria should grow as a nation. Let us think as a nation. Not in terms of region or ethnic group. God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lawale, uh, for calling in. Um, uh, Mr. Kishiju, I think I'll just take a break now. Uh, we'll be right back to continue with this conversation and taking calls on this whole subject of um, what is the whole fuss about the uh, Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria and uh, aspects of the central bank being recalled to Lagos. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back.